in our previous um, recording we were not able to watch the complete video right due to connectivity issue now let's watch this video again to wind up our topic call right beta now let's watch this video together smile and learn non renewable energy we obtain energy from two different sources renewable energy sources and non renewable energy sources today we're going to learn about non renewable energy sources non renewable energy refers to the limited energy sources on the planet that don't replenish naturally coal oil natural gas or nuclear energy are examples of non renewable energy sources in nature there are limited resources of this type of energy that's why they may run out with use these are some of the most well known non renewable energy sources oil is found under the earth's surface it's a liquid substance formed by a mixture of hydrocarbons oil has a strong smell and dark color oil is used to produce fuels like gasoline or gas oil which we use to power the engines of vehicles coal is a rock that is extracted from open pit underground mines it's a black substance formed by the fossilization of the dead remains of plants when coal is burned it produces heat natural gas is extracted from deposits found under the ground we use natural gas to heat houses uranium is a chemical element extracted from underground shafts and mines we use uranium to produce nuclear energy which in its turn will later transform into electric energy non-renewable energies have disadvantages for the environment for example exhaust gases emit contamination gases in the atmosphere which are harmful for the planet as for nuclear energy it is necessary to handle radioactive residues properly when there's an accident related to non-renewable energy resources and residues, environmental catastrophes of great magnitude may occur, which are crucial for the earth and all living beings. To reach the world energy objectives and help take care of the environment, it's indispensable to reduce the use of non-renewable energy resources and accelerate the transition towards renewable energies. Okay, now, um, if we talk about specifically uh, about coal, right? So it is not at all advisable as you, uh, you have seen in this video, you have watched in this video, Beta, that it is uh, these all fossil fuels, they are having a bad effect on our environment, right? They are not eco-friendly. They are not environmental friendly, right? So they have their own environmental losses and gains, right? If we specifically talk about coal, so it is not at all advisable to build coal fire power plant near to a river or close to a river, right? Why? Because they produces, uh, because as we have studied that uh, when we burn coal, it turns into ash and this fly ash, it, uh, uh, it contaminates nearby water resources, right? Uh, it contaminates uh, when and it uh, disturbed and damaged your aquatic life, right? Uh, freshwater uh, river life, uh, uh, right? Like fish. So mercury content becomes more in those fish. And when we eat that fish, when we consume that fish, what happens? Uh, it creates a nervous, uh, it damages our nervous system. Uh, and then brain disorders, uh, um, in young children and adults also and this fly ash basically it causes severe problems like uh, um, it reduces your crop yield it, uh, do, uh, it it is a major cause of respiratory disorder in human beings also and livestock uh, livestock also right but uh, other than that also there are some economic gains like we have studied it is the cheapest uh, uh, um, uh, type of a mode of uh, uh, non-renewable uh, resource right so uh, uh, it can be industrialization could be there more more manufacturing could be done with the help of this coal right 
and then um, other than that we can reduce energy crisis can be overcome in pakistan as we have uh, third coal fields uh, new third reserve, uh, coal reserves are found at third right and then uh, we can uh, we can um, uh, export that coal also to our nearby neighboring countries also right beta so that was all about coal now let's talk about another fossil fuel that is oil okay now oil is another type of fossil fuel again when i use word fossil fuel it means this also take a lot of millions of years to form right and again it is also form uh, due to the decomposition of marine animals and vegetative matter right um and once we use it and these all these fossil fuels are not at all environmental friendly when we burn it they release contaminated gases poisonous gases like uh, nitrogen sulfur dioxide carbon dioxide in great amount that is not at all um, good for our environment right beta okay now uh, coal is basically beta uh, as i said it's a fossil fuel where does it occur right um coal is uh, it can be found in many um, it is found basically uh, in anticline shaped rocks what are those anticline shaped rocks just like dome shaped rock we can say or we can say arc shaped layer of rock right if you look in page number 136 figure 8.11 repeat i'm repeating again page 136 figure 8.11 if you will observe and look at this diagram beta that is called anticline or arc shape or dome shaped rock right and oil is sandwiched in this rock right under this rock uh, between gas above and water below right if you look at this and these are basically porous it's uh, it's it, it, it is layer in porous and non porous rock you can see Uh, it is uh, clearly visible in the key also right now the dotted area that is porous rock and then the lined one is non porous rock and you can see uh, above oil that is gas and below it is water so wherever we get oil there only we get natural gas right beta this gas is natural gas right beta okay now let's talk further now look at the screen now these are two major potential oil refineries in, in pakistan right one is national oil refinery that is at karachi near port kaskin and another one is atak oil refinery that is in ktk near at morga right beta okay now let's talk more oil is called crude oil i'm talking about that is called as considered as black gold also right what is crude oil crude, crude oil the oil that we straight right then that crude oil it goes to refinery and then it gets refined to different purpose is for industrial purposes for domestic purposes it oil also right okay now look at this types let's look at the types crude oil and refined oil so the idea now what are the modes of extraction how do we extract oil oil is being extracted through dripping through pumping through drilling right uh, these are the three major properties to extract oil right now uh, for extraction process let's hold it hold here and let's come back to the textbook on page number 136 figure 8.12 in this figure you can see 
uh, the a long steel structure right this long steel structure is called derrick right or oil rig also you can say right okay uh oil is being found deep underground also and under the sea bed also right like recently few months back or last year only right uh no not last year in the beginning of this year we came across the, that uh, the government uh, said that we got oil reserves under the arabian sea sea bed but those uh, reserves were not found later on right okay now let's look at this figure again figure 8.12 these are the derricks there from which you can see in the middle of this derrick a huge drill bit is there right with the help of this derrick what happens it drilled uh, deep underground till where we found oil reserves right and then when we get oil reserve this derrick or oil rig is being dismantled right and then it is attached with pipes right walls and pipes right why which controls the flow of oil and then through these pipes the oil is get filled up in tankers oil tankers right and then transported to refineries right beta okay now uh, other than that you can see the uh, mode of transportation how do we transport oil it gets transported through tanker Arabia from Gulf countries, so that oil and we keep that in mind. We do import only crude oil, right? And that oil is being imported through uh, tanker ships, right? Oil tanker also we can say, and then the other road tankers, and then pipelines also. Road tanker, we can transport it through uh, the different parts. Of the uh, country, uh, source of power for thermal electricity for heating. It is it is used as lubricant for machines to make Yes. How uses? We were talking about uses. So oil is being used uh, for thermal electricity heating. It is used as lubricant for machines. Uh, as it is used for like aircraft, diesel for buses and engines, rail engines and trucks. Okay, now there are different byproducts of oil also. Those can be formed while the oil is being processed, right? Formed while the oil is being processed in refineries, right? Now, it is what importance and use like paraffin, wax, plastic, synthetic rubber, detergents, insecticide, pharmaceutical products, and furnace oil. These all byproducts, the list uh, is given on page number. that is very important beta because in the extreme north part of your country if we talk about sawad gilgit uh, baltistan and all these areas right uh, there the proper infrastructures is has not been laid down yet for the transportation of oil right in terms of pipelines i'm talking about right beta so there the oil is being transported through road tankers right Okay, and then uh, from till wherever we have the railway, uh, in, um, railway lines, there are also railway tracks. The proper infrastructure is there for railway. Till there, it is being transported through railway, and then it is uh, again loaded to uh, road tankers, and then it goes through road tankers. Right, beta? 
Okay, you can see one map is given on page number 138, figure 8.15, where the location of different oil refineries are given. And where are oil reserves found in Pakistan? In Lower Sin, that is at Lagari, Mazari, Khashkheli, Tendo Adam. And in Port Pra Plateau, it's Tut, Adi, Dharnal, and Joyamir. These are the potential locations of oil reserves in Pakistan. Right? But through this, this map, figure 8.15, Page on page number 138, you can see uh, the oil refineries uh, and the white oil pipeline project that was uh, initiated by Parco. Right? What is Parco? The full form is Park Arab Refinery Company. Right? Uh, so they initiated, they launched the project of White Line Pipe Project, right? Uh, which uh, which will carry refined oil from Karachi to the north of the country, right? Uh, to make transportation of oil easy, cheap, and smooth without any obstacle, right? Now, on page number 139, you can see two tables are given, figure 8.16 and figure 8.17, where you can see the production of oil in different countries and production of oil in Pakistan that is shown that is being shown here with the help of these two tables. Okay, so again, uh, uh, different uh, government bodies are being working, like for example, OGDCL, right, Oil and Gas Development Corporation, and then we uh, the other companies are also there, right? Those are working together in order. Uh, to plan, promote, organize, and implement programs for the exploration and development of oil and gas resources in Pakistan, right? So that's what, uh, now for the oil, right? Inshallah, in the next uh, upcoming classes, we'll be studying about the remaining two, uh, uh, remaining non-renewable resources, that's, that is natural gas and nuclear power, right? But I hope you have understood, and uh, please make notes, and then, uh, refer to your textbooks. Thank you so much from my side.